This is Katie Hunter for MMA UK. I'm here with Dan Hardy. Dan, thank you so much for doing this. I know how busy you are. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. It's fight week. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always available to talk to people. I'm just, uh, I wish I had more time or a clone of myself. That'd be nice. <laughs> well, I know you've got loads of stuff to do, so let's dive straight in. I wanted to ask you about the main event tomorrow and your thoughts on it. Jan, I'm going to call him Blackowitz. I've heard about 400 different pronunciations of his surname um, against Thiago Santos. How do you see that one going? Um, obviously, we're going we're gonna to expect a rush from Santos. He's going to be very aggressive. He's going to throw wild flying kicks and probably not a very well thought out attack. Mm -hmm. But when he starts, it's very difficult to stop him. Whereas Jan, he's on a four or five fight win streak now. He's able to slow fights down, maybe get a couple of takedowns early. I think he's got like the highest success rate in the light heavyweight division at the moment for takedowns. So I think if he's able to get the fight to the ground or at least clinch Santos and slow him down, that's where Jan starts to win. Sort of third, fourth, fifth round for me, whereas Santos is he's the early starter. Yeah. I think he's just pure violence, which I really love to see, but I don't know whether Jan's going to have like the perfect antidote maybe to that main turn. Well, maybe. I mean, that, that's the, that's what Jan's so good at is... is not exposing himself too much. I mean, sometimes it can make for a slow fight, and he has been accused of that in the past. But mm. I think now with this last, this recent win streak, he's found his confidence. And and I th you know, with someone like Thiago Santos, you kind of can't have a slow fight. They force you to do stuff. Um, and I think if Santos puts him under pressure early, we're going to see good defensive work from Jan, and then probably slowly start to kind of turn it around if the fight goes past a couple of rounds. And Santos, to me, had the slightly more impressive career, just some of the guys that he's got um, wins over. He stopped a lot of people as well, whereas a lot of Jan's um, wins have come by decision. And he's obviously even stopped the number one contender, Anthony Smith. So it's going to be an exciting fight, I think. It, it, it is, yeah, it is. And the thing is, Santos knows now. He's in the division where he's got a win over a guy that's fighting John Jones. So... I mean, that, that's a good argument for him, especially if Smith does well against John Jones. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm Santos, I'm pulling for Smith to win because then a, a rematch for a world title sounds really good to him. And he must feel like he's very close to that. Whereas, you know, Jan, as you said, he's got a lot of decision wins on his record. But what I would say about that is that this is a five-round fight and not three. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think if Jan's winning decisions over three rounds, that might be enough just to get him into those last two rounds. And that's when he can cause problems for Santos. Yeah. And a potential rematch for Jimmy f with either of these guys in the future. Who doesn't want to watch Jimmy Manoa fight? You know, <laughs> big hands, big power. I, I would watch those fights, absolutely. Um, I think everybody in the light heavyweight division is going to be paying attention to this one. Because yeah. I think, I mean, uh, th you know, there's talks of Jan at least moving towards a title contention fight in, in his next one, if not a title fight, if the, if the cards fall. So um, I think a lot of people are paying attention to this. We've got uh, Volkan Uzdemir sitting front row, so obviously yeah. he's on the London card, but he's paying close attention to this, and yeah. I think he's eyeing one of these one of these fighters for the, uh, for the for the next one. Awesome. And let's talk about one of our own, who's on the card. Chris Fishgold is fighting Daniel Tamer. Um, they looked quite tasty in the the weigh-ins just then. They look both look really up for it. Yeah, they are. Well, I mean, if you, I always think back to Daniel Taymor's UFC debut against Danny Henry in Glasgow, and it was a, just a wild fight. Broke yeah. his hand in the first 20 seconds and fought through it, and we know Chris Fishgold's an absolute monster. You know, he, he had a rough outing in his UFC debut, but it happens for a lot of yeah. people. You know, it's, it's that, that first time you step in, into the octagon, especially if you've built it up for so long. And we know that Chris has been wanting his UFC debut for a while, so yeah. I would imagine it. You know, he built it up in his head, and he felt the pressure on the day, and he just... I feel like he, tr he tried to push the fight a bit too much yeah. when he didn't need to. And, and I think that this is a, much like the main event, it's a fight that's going to come to him. And, you know, Daniel Taymor is aggressive. He likes to throw with big power. Um, I mean, th you know, if, if Chris Fishgold's looking at level changing and taking this fight to the floor, there'll be lots of opportunities for it. Yeah. Um, I, I think he might get caught up in a brawl, though. I think these two guys are going to start throwing leather at each other, especially with the face-off at the weigh-ins. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, uh, Fishy did say that um, when I spoke to him a few weeks ago that kind of the moment, walk, the walkout, I think, like it, it suddenly felt really big when he was doing it. Um, you you must know how that feels, but I I really like that style of fighting where, you know, win or lose, you leave it all out there and it's, it's going to be another bomb burner, I think. I, I agree. I think there are a lot of fights on the card like that, though. You know, I mean, we've got Jan Vellante and, and on the card as well, and he's the same kind of guy. You know, he, he's going to stand in front of you and he's going to throw punches until someone falls over. And 
And as we said, I mean, what is he on? Four split decision fights in his last four? I mean, <laughs> that's a guy that's not bothered about the judges' scorecards. He's just <laughs> looking for that one punch. Um, but, uh, you know, I, th I think that the... I think the sport's shifting. I think we're starting to see a bit of a branching off. We're seeing the guys that we want to see on the card because they're fun fights to watch and we're not really bothered where they fall in the rankings. Yeah. And then we've got the other guys that are, you know, clearly on the way to a title. And then guys on the way down, they kind of fall in one of those two categories, like Cowboy. Yeah. You know, do we do we rerun his title shot and do we get him back up to a, 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 a 155 uh, title shot or do we just have him have fun fights at whatever weight class he chooses, you know? I, I like the fact that we're celebrating these guys that just come to fight now and um, you know, it's not all about the rankings because it's, you know, it's about the fighting. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, one more on this card that I wanted to ask you about was another former Cage Warriors guy, Carlo Pedazzoli, Cemento. He had a really tough fight in his, his last fight. He was fighting Oliveira. Um, and obviously he got caught early on, but he was doing really well up till then. Obviously he beat Nicholas Dalby in Gothenburg um, and then uh, beat Bradley Scott in Liverpool. How, how do you see his fight going tomorrow? Um, you know, th the funny thing is about these two guys, they've got quite a similar style on the feet. Uh, Dwight Grant stands a bit more square, um, but it, it's all about body kicks. They're, bo they're both throw body kicks. Uh, Dwight's got big power. I would say that the smart thing to do for Pedersoli is probably, you know, try and get the fight to the ground early I, even if it's just to tie up uh, Dwight Grant and, and slow him down take some of that power off his uh, off his shots I would say that Dwight Grant's got more power in his hands than Pedersoli but they've both got very good kicking games um, and with them being South poor against Orthodox you've got to think Pedersoli and, and Grant, Grant are going to be battering that that open side you know from the very first uh, bell so I, I think the smarter fight wins in this one. I, I was, I'll, I'll tell you this actually. I was watching them training the other day, and Dwight Grant was working a lot of takedowns and stuff. Right. So may, maybe he's looking at switching it up. But he's got big pretty in his corner, so yeah. I, I think he's going to start trading punches though. <laughs> and he obviously came out of the Dana White contender series as well. So good to see some of those guys coming through and and that series working. Um, so let's move on now to Cage Warriors London next week. Just a couple of fights I wanted to pick out from this one. Um, the main event is James Webb, who we last saw run out in Colchester. Um, he's he is fighting um, Thomas Robertson. Yeah. Sorry, Thomas. I've not even looked at the cards yet with the, with the fights this weekend. I, I can't do more than one event. I'm, I'm going to blame it on that as well. Uh, <laughs> um, James obviously is known for his jiu-jitsu game, but he beat Jason Radcliffe in Colchester with his hands and starting to look pretty scary on the striking front as well. So be good to see how he handles m the main event spot in London. He says it's his favourite place to fight. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, if you get a win over someone like Jason Radcliffe, you're going to find yourself in, you know, in big fights, in main events and those kind of things. And, and as you said, you know, people know him for his jiu-jitsu. So I, I would imagine Jason Radcliffe didn't really concern himself too much about, about James Webb's hands. And, and maybe maybe that's what, what cost him the fight. Uh, Webb did look a little surprised himself, actually, after that <laughs> fight. He was like, oh, uh, maybe I can knock people out as well. I mean, may maybe we'll see him turn into a bit more of a striker now and fall back on his ground game if he needs it. Mm. He's certainly got power in his hands. And we know how, how durable Radcliffe is. He's a, a veteran. He's been around for a long time. So it's not like him to get caught by someone unless they've got power. So I, I would yeah. say we've got to keep an eye on Webb. And uh, Webb himself said at middleweight, you know, if somebody's hands land on you, then it can be game over, you know, however well you're doing up until then. Um, and another fight I wanted to pick out is uh, one of my coaches, John Maguire, is fighting Brad Wheeler. For me, that's just such a fan-pleasing fight. Both guys great at jiu-jitsu. Um, both Cage Warriors veterans. John's obviously a UFC vet as well. What, what do you think of that one? I, I think it's going to be a great fight. I think, I mean, we, we, know, we know Brad Wheeler is, is tough. He likes to brawl with, with his opponents. Um, sometimes he, you know... He, his his fighting instincts get the better of him, and sometimes he leaves himself open and gets caught by guys that have got a, a bit of a smarter game plan. And you know that could potentially happen with with John. You know John Maguire has been around for a long time. He's he's a well rounded fighter. He's got good wrestling. He's got good jujitsu. The smart thing to do would be for him to employ that in the fight. Um, but y you know what Brad Wheeler's like. He'll talk trash. He'll get inside your head. He'll you know it'll, it'll get you fired up as 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 well as he is, and then. You might end up in a brawl with him. You, yeah. you just don't know. I mean, that that's the trap with Brad Wheeler. He's getting caught up in a brawl, and he can take as good as he gives. So I, I think the smart thing is to lean on the technical side, and I think yeah. John's got an advantage there. 
Yeah, and uh, he's he's actually been coaching out in Tenth Planet in Vegas, so you can't sleep on his jujitsu either. Should be fun. Um, so yesterday we were celebrating ten years of <laughs> your last knockout victory in the UFC. I've told you before that the reason that I turned from a casual into an absolute MMA nut was because of your fight with GSP and it just totally blew my mind and inspired me. Obviously, sad news that GSP's retired yesterday. What what did you think of that? Well, sad news for, for, for us as for fans, us yeah, because I mean, I, you know, I, I'd love to see him, I'd love to see the Khabib fight, you know, I would still love to see GSP against Anderson Silva, even though obviously times have changed, but it's it's incredible the career that he's had what what he was able to do you know to to get himself to a title shot to lose to come back to you know to to the whole Matt Serra thing and coming back from that and and the the way that it changed his game the way he started approaching things far more from a a, a technical p a perspective which is why you know he's fought so le so long in his career because yeah. he didn't really take too much damage yeah. I mean I I fought him for twenty minutes and I don't think I landed a punch on him. He just doesn't put himself at risk, you know, and yeah. I think that's fascinating. And I think a lot of fighters, a lot of the younger fighters today will be better fighters because of GSP and because of, of, of studying and watching his career. I, I'm certainly a better fighter and analyst because of GSP. You know, you, you learn so much from someone that can stay so single-minded and focused on what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit more like Brad Wheeler. I just got br drawn into a brawl too often and uh, I made bad decisions. But GSP was a technician, and I think that... Well, he changed the sport. He changed the sport, and it, it was an honour for me to be a part of the sport at the same time as him, even if he did beat me up. Is he the goat? I think he is. I, I don't think I, you know. I hate to I hate to bring it around to this, but the thing that sets it aside is drug testing for me. Yeah. You know, it's it's the thing that sets it aside. He's, yeah. he's basically the only one who's ever mentioned in that debate who hasn't popped for anything at any time, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, the only person, different weight classes, time out, injuries, you know, and he fought the best as well. I mean, you know, I look at some of the other guys around in the weight class and I'm, I thought to myself, I I'm glad that GSP beat them convincingly enough so I didn't have to fight them on the way up, you know. <laughs> I mean, you've got the likes of John Fitch and Tiago Alves and Josh Koscheck, obviously Matt Hughes, BJ Penn. Yeah, Nate, Nick Diaz. You know, you, I mean, you're looking at you're looking at fighters, you're looking at other legends. Yeah. You know, you look down GSP's record and it's it's legend after legend. Um, you know, and and I was fortunate enough to so I I fought him, and then a couple of years later, I started growing up and helping him for training camps as well. And GSP outside of the gym is is just as golden as he is inside. I mean, like, and this is a funny story. We, we I mean, we would go. GSP, GSP goes out every night. I don't know whether he struggles to sleep, but he just he loves to be in a club. He drinks water. Really? He talks to people, but he he just loves being out amongst people. And uh, I so not have him down no, I know, I know. But e every night, like when we were in Montreal training, every night they're out, and he gets back at four o'clock, and he's ready in the gym at ten o'clock. It's amazing how he does it. But then at the same time, you know, we're, we're around his house that weekend watching the fights, and uh, I, I was getting ready for training the week after, and I'm like, oh, I need to find a place to do laundry, and he's like, oh, bring it over here, I'll do it for you. Oh, you know, I mean that, you know, world yeah, champion, hey, greatest of all time, <laughs> wash my underwear for me. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. <laughs> Sweetheart. <laughs> You know, he's he's just he's a genuine down to earth person. He loves martial arts, and he's had an incredible career. And yeah. I think, uh, oh, I think we're all grateful for being a part of it. You know, watching it. Well, I wish him the best of luck digging for dinosaurs or whatever he chooses yeah. to do yeah. next. Find that T Rex <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Dan. I massively appreciate it. No Thank you.